Hi, this is an introduction to one of the methods we use to teach borrowing subtraction or the standard subtraction algorithm. For an example, I'm going to do one of the hardest kinds of problems, maybe the hardest kinds of problems for kids learning borrowing subtraction. And that's uh, when you're subtracting and you have zero tens in the menu end or the top number. And here's the reason why we call it the HTO method is it's a place value chart labeled with H for hundreds, T for tens, O for ones. And it's a subtraction, so you draw what you have and cross out what you're taking away. Uh, sometimes what we do is write down the number at the bottom, but don't draw it. In the beginning of learning this method, sometimes kids will draw both numbers. And that's what you do when you add, not when you subtract. Uh, but sometimes kids would like to write down the number so they can remember what they're subtracting. I'm going to do both of these methods side by side so you can see how they're related to each other. You don't have to do them side by side. It's fine to just do the HTO method if that's what works. So you have to draw what you have. That's the 403. One, two, three, four, hundreds and three ones. There are no tens. And you can see here we have to subtract six ones. Can't cross out six ones because we don't have it. six ones don't have any tens to decompose so we have to work with what we have plenty of hundreds so we can decompose a hundred when we do this you always get ten tens for it two three four five six seven eight nine ten now what this looks like on the numbers is we don't have four hundreds anymore we have only three and now we have 10 tens. This really helps with one of the more, more common mistakes with this type of problem, which is uh, a lot of times what kids will do is they'll just do this. They'll cross out the zero and just say they have 13 ones, which doesn't work because you that's only getting 10 for a decomposed 100. But in the picture, they, don't t they tend not to skip that. So now we have 10 tens. We still don't have enough ones, so we have to decompose a 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I like to draw five group rows, just they kind of look like 10 frames. They're easier to count. They're organized, so you can tell the difference between uh, a dot that you need to cross out or count instead of a speck of eraser dust. And now I don't have 10 tens anymore. I only have nine. This is a step that's all, uh, skipped a lot of times by people just learning borrowing subtraction is forgetting to cross out one of those tens and replace it with a nine. And then now we have 13 ones, just like that. Now, eventually, once you've practiced a few of these, the shortcut that everybody learns on the borrowing subtraction is to just cross out the zero, replace it with a nine on your way to the 13, and skip the step of writing the 10 and crossing it out and replacing it with a nine. It doesn't matter which way you do that. It's fine at all, as long as you remember that there's only gonna be nine after you've decomposed one of those 10 tens. And you just cross out what you need to cross out. So I need to cross out six of these ones, so that's five, six. 13 minus six is seven, and I can just count what's left here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have seven ones. I need to cross out seven tens. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven. You can see there's two left that aren't crossed out, and I cross out two hundreds, one, two, and I have one hundred left, hundred twenty-seven. 
over here with the numbers. 9 minus 7 is 2, and 3 minus 2 is 1. This method is also really helpful for kids who are still struggling to learn their, uh, their subtraction facts for 20 and down. Because you don't have to think about what's 13 minus 6. You just count, you just cross it out and count what's left.